Hi and uh, welcome to this video on um, how the basic GIS operations are implemented in QGIS. So this is a follow-up video on the general conceptual video where I talked about what the general um, GIS operations are. This video I will show how they're implemented in QGIS and there's also a video where I show how they're implemented in ArcGIS Pro. So first of all, um, let's uh, start QGIS. So um, it uh, launched QGIS, and um, QGIS is in many ways like uh, ArcGIS as, as a principle. So um, we have a browser and layers, these things, um, these windows. Uh, panes as they call it. Um, I personally prefer them to be tabbed so I can easily uh, give a bit better area. So I have the same setup when I use ArcGIS and um, and I use QGIS. And another thing that is also similar is that although QGIS can go directly to a direct all folders on the computer, it is a, 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 a practical thing to have them up in your favorites. So if I say add directory and then I can go down and say that my data is in general stored on S data and then I see select this folder here. So now I've got S data as my general store. So in this case, um, and this is not a project setting. This is will follow um, that computer and, or that user and it, um, so it uh, will go in any new project you make, you make, you'll still have this S. So that's one of the differences from, um, from ArcGIS where this mapping of folders is um, project wise. So what I'll now do is that I'll go down and I'll start out by uh, creating a new project. So a blank project, I can go up here and say new, same thing, blank, blank here. And it'll give me a new blank project. Um, and I'll now go down in my national data, Denmark and traffic, and I'll take my uh, railroads and drag into this mapping display area. So now I've got my railroads here. Um, unlike uh, ArcGIS, that starts out with having a um, a default background image. Um, we have to add it ourselves in um, in in, uh, in QGIS. But that is, however, one installed down under these uh, X Y Z files. So I browse that. We got our um, OpenStreetMap. I can drag that in. Um, so now we have the same map set up as we had in uh, the video on uh, on, on ArcGIS Pro. Um, note that here uh, via ArcGIS it automatically places them at the bottom. Here it's the last layer is always the top layer, so we'll have to drag it down so it's underneath our railroads. If we want to change the layout of our railroads, we uh, can just double click on the symbol and that will bring us in to this property dialog box, which is exactly the same as we'll get if we go and say uh, properties. Here we can on the symbology, we can then change uh, how we want our uh, railroad to look and I'll just change, change the standard railroad symbol like that. So um, here I've got my railroads displayed in um, my map view. They're a bit big, I could change that, but these small tweaking of of the interface and layout I will cover in a, a more detailed video on how to symbolize. So um, I will uh, zoom into a round rook um, and uh, like that a bit closer. Um, I was working at a scale of one 2,500, so uh, 
as in the ArcGIS with this type scale in here. And now I have exactly the same scale as I was working with in ArcGIS Pro. If I want to create a new feature class, as they were called over in uh, ArcGIS Pro, I can go up to my layer menu, because that's what they are called here, and I can say add new layer or create layer, and I can choose different things. I can choose them as a temporary scratch layer, so they are, uh, are not persistent, or I can use what is uh, QGIS preferred for data storage, a geo package. So I'll say new geo package layer. Um, it asks me which database I'm using, so I'll save it uh, on not S, but on my just like I did before, I'll do it down in my documents um, and I will uh, call it Rook. Just like that. Um, and save that kill package. So now I have a, a, a and it, but it defaults to call the first table ovulation. It calls that the same uh, as a package. I don't want that. I'll call this buildings. So now they call it buildings. And I'll change the geometry to polygons. Oops, no, not polygons. Polygons. I can choose um, the reference system, coordinate system. Um, again, just like in ArcGIS, I have um, my predefined coordinate systems. So I have projected and geographic. So the function more or less the same. Um, or so I can look for them, or I could type part of a name. So I could also because I know that the I the European Petroleum Survey Group code for it, the PSG. So that's 25,832. And just like in Google Yes, it will find that one for me and display about what is that suitable for. Fine, that's the one I want. So I now I have created my coordinate system. I wanted um, an attribute saying about what is the use of the building. So I call it use, it will be a text. And I'll set the maximum length of it to 50. And I'll add it to my list. And I'll make a I'll attribute students. And that's going to be a integer. Uh, and I'll also add that to my attribute list. I don't want any set coordinates. I don't want any measured coordinates. So I'm basically finished um, with setting up what ArcGIS would call a feature class. Here we call them a table. So they are a bit closer to um, the, the basic concept of the relational data model. Um, but it was off in this new layer, so it's a bit, still a bit confusing. They call it a new layer, but when you store it, you store it as a table in the database or a relation if you wish. So I'm finished with this and I say OK. And I now have my buildings up here. Again, there's no buildings on my data set here. So I will uh, have to start editing them. In uh, QGIS, what we have to do when we start editing is that we have to set a layer into edit mode. So I'll first do that by clicking on this little pencil. So now you can see there is a pencil on top of my building indicating that it is in edit mode. Once it is in edit mode, I can use this one, add polygon. And uh, here I can then draw my building. And if I click to finish it and say this was and uh, let's say 100 students down there. Yeah. Um, so I made my first building and I'll just continue making buildings. I, 
I did before. Um, so I might do some integer. Call it. Um, it's probably also easy and um, two hundred students. Two hundred students there. Um, and this building down here was adding in. And finish it. And uh, admin. And 50 students. It's good. Um, with these more complex buildings, uh, I'll assume it again. Again, the principle is exactly the same. And I, I go in and I'll set up the door with a bit more complex shape there. It um, default to a transparent color, which is very nice, so I can see through, so I can see that, that I'm drawing more or less correctly. Um, finish it. And uh, 500 students. As for the ArcGIS, where we had a modifier, we have the same principle here. I can go and click on this vertex tool. Uh, when I do that, I can click my uh, building here, and you can see my vertices. And I can then, oh dear, uh, drag a drag one here, something like that. Uh, So I'll click on it and drag it to change it to a new location. So it didn't help, but I showed the principle. Um, with my uh, with my um, one where I had holes in it, you will see this. I just moved down to my. Uh, My building here with a hole in it. Um, I can't do the same trick as I did in um, in ArcGIS by drawing the, the, the inner first and then saying part and so on. What I have to do here is I have to activate an extra of these floating toolbars here, um, which is called um, advanced digitization. Um, I have my ad thing here, so the principle is here that I start out creating my full object. So, uh, like this, and I'll then finish it. Say this was um, IMT, I uh, probably. 200 students in this building at a time. Um, it's okay. And then I can go and say add ring. Um, it's a bit difficult to see there, so I'll just try change the properties of the layer um, to, uh, to make it more transparent. So um, I have a um the layer rendering and uh yeah i have they have called it all elevate opacity but never mind same thing and uh i can make a transparency or i could make as i probably normally would do make it uh, in a hatch uh pattern so uh, now i have um i can see through what i'm doing and what i'll do is i'll then add a ring so i'll uh Choose my ring tool, and I'll then 
as this in a ring. So now it's created a hole in the building. So in, uh, in ArcGIS being this, uh, sorry, in QGIS, the method for making buildings with holes or lakes with islands or whatever is that you first create the outer object. Finish it. Say this is admin, and it's that's probably me. Oh, oh, well, there are some students also, I guess, but not at the moment because they're working on it. So at the moment, there's no students. So now I've made the outer object, and then I go and add my ring. Could be outside, so I've made made two islands belonging to the same object, or inside, same principle. If there's an even number of errors and it's a hole and if there's an uneven error it's an object so making this uh, um, tool here of, 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 um, of, of my holes in my in my data set I can now place my pencil back by clicking on it save my changes if I want to uh, change the display of my buildings I can go and say properties and symbology, just like in ArcGIS. I can go up and say that everything is as a categorical. They call it unique values. And I say, what is the one I'm going to do it on? Is unused, not student, unused. And I'll here press classify. And um, maybe I should have a uh, was very start so I think I'll just make a uh, simple fill here um, and get rid of that part there um, sorry I was just uh, so now I'm, I've got a simple base mill and you can see I've got the different full thousands to get rid of the hatch um, so fine and if I uh, zoom to there, I can see all the different buildings and their coloring for. If I, as in ArcGIS, want a label on it, it's the same place. I can go and say properties and label. And I want to label them based on a uh, single label. And I want to base it on use. And I can change the font and all those other things. Yeah. So now I've got my um, my labels and my uses on it. If I uh, want to create an additional uh, feature class, um, I will go up and I will say layer, and I will say create layer, view package. I will uh, browse to my database, my author. So going to the same database, I will call this for path. I will make them lines. I will can change it to uh, this coordinate system. I don't want any attributes on it. So I'll just say OK. And it then says, do I want to delete it? All right, the full database, or do I just want to add a new layer? I just want to add a new layer. So now I've got my path data set. And uh, just like in, uh, in uh, ArcGIS, snapping is a really good thing to have. Again, snapping is a toolbar, so I can activate the snapping. So this is the one that activates snapping. Um, and here I can say which type of, uh, of snapping I want. So I'll just activate snapping. So this is how close it is. And do I want to uh, these different tools I can do it use here and also I can uh, choose to snap onto vertexes or edges or segments so I'll snap to vertexes so going back to my path add my line um, so it's into edit mode 
and I will uh, then create a new line and uh, maybe I should zoom out a bit more like this so um, add a new line going so just like before so down here up to here have a vertex at that point and bring a new line here up like that And in right click if is a finish in the curious for digitizing. And I'll create a new line. Let's take this part this time. And you can see as I get close to this vertex here, I get this little pink square indicating that there is something I can snap to. And I can snap to that. And I can bring it on to here. So you can say I could snap to the edge there. And if I wanted to snap to uh, to uh, my segment, that I can now snap to that also. So I can go there and then snap to my segment. Bring it that path and make a path from here with my segments snapping on and over to this bit here. Fine. So now I have finished digitizing it. I put labels on it and um, I have made my nice paths. I will just um, turn off my editing. So I save it. And I might just want to, I just double click or right click, does it always gives the same or less. Uh, and I just want to have a, uh, a bit thicker line for my paths. So um so i made my map to make the layout i go to my project and say i want to create a new print layout call it map no call it layout layout one or hook or something Th these are names so i can have many layouts within the same project um brings me up a layout page this one I can right click on, say paper properties, and change it to a A3. So I have an A3 in landscape mode, that's fine. I can zoom out so I get the full of it. I can place a data frame, so a map frame. So I'll try to do something that looks something like in, uh, like it looked in ArcGIS. So here we have my data frame. I can insert a, um, a north arrow and this bit peculiar of north arrows they are pictures so I choose a picture symbol drag over I want it and now um, search directories that was what um, that was what I was looking for and here we have um, let's take this one so so I went into search directories that found me the, the pre-installed images or in this case they are SVG files. So I've taken one of these pre-installed SVG files and installed it. Um, I can insert my uh, scale bar. So here again it has this time it has defaulted to meters and it has defaulted to um, a nice number per unit. So that's what it um, it, it it will do. Um, I can also have um, based on segments. So in this case, we started out with uh, 100 meters. I can do exactly the same, what's was called fit by width. So it's called fit segment width here. And I can say I want segments of 50 meters uh, for each of them. That's exactly the, the same principle that we had in uh, GIS. And finally, I can insert my legend uh, that's fine and I have my um, my legend as I had in uh, ArcGIS the only thing I need in order to finish this so it was exactly the same as in uh, ArcGIS is I want to add some text um, so I'll add a text box and uh, right
Moscow University. Um, I can create some uh, some um, additional um, HTML if I wanted. I can choose my font, and I can choose the size to uh, 36. Okay, fine. And uh, I guess we are very close to have been having produced the same uh, map in QGIS and in ArcGIS videos. And um, finally, I can export it as a PDF. I can uh, accept uh, the CD warning here. And I can overwrite the ones we've done before. Okay, save it. And wait for the little green bar saying that it's done it. So now, um, we'll just close this down and open our PDF. And um, here we have exactly the same, uh, or more or less exactly the same uh, map as we produced in uh, ArcGIS. So in this video, I have tried to show how this general principles of using JS I implemented in um, in QGIS and remember this is a video in a series where I first have a conceptual one where I talk about the principles and then there's where I demonstrate how this is done in ArcGIS Pro and um, finally this one where I demonstrate how it's done in um, QGIS. I hope you liked the video. I hope to see you in another video. Bye.